Hi everyone, it's me again. This time I'm going to show you how I approach my journaling. Okay, so I start with a 2B pencil and I do my drawing first. Over the top of that, I use a fine tip black marker and I go over all the pencil lines with that. Then I'm using my dagger brush and I'm just splashing in some paint into the areas that mostly indicate the foliage. And I do that fairly repeatedly when I do these sketches. I do the foliage areas first. And you just saw me use my drinking straw and I love just blowing the paint just a little bit to give a, a very random mark to the foliage. Somehow, once I get that foliage in, I feel more comfortable. So I work across my sketch in much the same way, getting the foliage areas done first. I don't use the drinking straw absolutely everywhere, but that dagger brush is really handy for me to get that lovely spontaneous mark. And I'm flopping and flipping the paint in to give a very random, unexpected feel to the foliage. While that foliage is drying, I don't do the houses. I wait till I get the uh, sky in now because that's well away from the foliage. I'm not gonna make anything run. And this is Opera Rose with a little bit of cobalt blue. So I'm getting that in first, moving across the painting with the sky. And I've got a wet tissue here or a Kleenex that I've just wet the end of it. And I'm just taking out just a few areas to indicate some sort of cloud movement. So over to the left hand side in the same manner, putting in a slightly deeper value of the color and getting that wet tissue out and just dabbing to get the feeling of, of the clouds. You notice too that I'm angling that towards the steeple area of the church in the background. Just makes it more of an indication of where I want the viewer to look. So now my trees in the front have dried fairly well and I'm attacking the uh, roof of this building. Now even though in France most of the roofs are in this particular area of southwest France, France they're a kind of a grey brown colour, I'm still putting that wild orange in first. I never put just straight brown on anything, I always put some other colour underneath that and this is the, uh, the same procedure. And then I'm using my thirsty brush, this time it's the number eight round brush and I just take out a little bit of colour across the uh, roof to make it a little bit more interesting, not quite so flat. And then after that I just start systematically going over all the facades that I can see in the, um, in the sketch, the side of the building and the front of the building. And I know watercolour is going to fade two or three shades, shades lighter, so I'm willing to put some punch into my colours because I know they're not going to be that dark when it dries. And now I'm using a palette knife to just scrape out some paint and do a little bit of linear touches. Back to doing some roofs and systematically working through the whole composition in much the same way. My light source is coming from the right hand side so I do want to make the left hand sides of the buildings a little deeper in value. But sometimes I break the rules in that respect. I don't always stick to that. This is just a little sketch after all. And I like to think about putting light against dark, dark against light. I'm not always that scientific about where the sun is at that particular time. I'm just working on my painting and making it work for me. So 
So now I'm doing the main building. Started off with a maroon colour first, or you call it maroon, <laughs> being American. Um, and then I popped in the orange over the top, just so it warms it up a little bit, makes it indicate the same colours that are in the rest of the composition. Gradually, uh, this light against dark, dark against light feeling with my paintings creates that depth that I want. Using the thirsty brush just to take out a little bit of paint here and there. And I don't paint over the straw marks that I blew with that foliage. I go in between those marks. So now the background, I'm leaving a deliberate white line between the two facades of this building. Just so there's a nice demarcation there. You notice when I did that background tree, it was a bright yellow. And over the top, I bring in the greens and the blues. But the yellow is there to give it just that little bit of a freshness, not just completely green. Back to a roof. Each, each section I take, I start to do is to keep away from the areas that are really wet. So I pick and choose as I go which one I'm going to be better able to paint while the uh, other sections are drying. Now I realise the roof line for that back roof there is not reading correctly so I am going to have to fix that later on. And there's a little peep of a tree here right between these two buildings. I will have to put that in too. Right there. Just a little bit of green. Helps carry that greenness through the composition. So left hand side of this little turret area. Put it in shadow. You don't have to put every bit of detail into one of these sketches. Really it's just the essence of what you've seen. Now here to create depth against the foliage I've decided to put in, this wasn't in the picture that I was copying from, but I thought with the purpley colour, the cobalt blue and the opera rose together makes a nice purpley colour and I've created some sort of they could be shadows or they could be more flowers, I don't know, but I do like that colour. So I'm introducing that and I'm going to infiltrate that colour throughout the windows and the shutters just to carry it through. Even though probably, and I can't remember, but the building itself I think had greenish shutters if I can remember correctly. My photograph is not all that clear. <clears throat> so again with the depth I'm putting in some shadow colour in behind the foliage to push the foliage forward. Just a pop here and there, little dot dash here and there, I call it a Morse code. So I put in a little Morse code technique here and there just to make one plane read against another so that it comes forward a little bit more. And there I've corrected that building. That makes me happier. Carrying that purpley colour through on the shadow side of some of these buildings. I'm now starting to work my darks in. There's something odd about that building right there too that I just painted. I need to correct that. I'm pretty sure I'm going to put a tree in there. Now just artistic license here because my photograph did not have much sunlight on the uh, facades of the buildings at all but I've cast a, a little bit of a shadow from perhaps a roof or something on that uh, steeple area of the church and I'm making much more of 
the shadows behind the trees. Now here I'm deciding to do a tree. So with these Stillman, Burn, Stillman and Burn journals, the paper is not a rough paper. It's a cold press paper, but it's, uh, it's quite smooth. So you can take out things quite easily by just using a damp brush and just blotting. I just wanted to cover up that building a little bit because it didn't look right. Something was wrong with my perspective. So I decided to put a tree there. That's my artist prerogative. I'm doctoring up a little bit more of the shadows and I'm going to put in a little bit of another cast roof line shadow on this just to create depth. Gradually build up the feeling of one plane against another plane. When you're doing window panes, don't paint absolutely everyone exactly the same. Leave some white, leave some with streaks in them. You know, just, just a dot dash here and there. You don't have to be too fastidious about this sort of thing. So I'm gradually just working through. There goes my shadow across this roof line as well. And then at the end of this, I'm going to do a little bit more ink work. I decide to use a bit of gouache with this. So I've mixed white gouache with my watercolour. This one was with yellow watercolour. And I'm using my little brush and I'm just popping in some highlights at certain areas. And it works particularly well against the darks. So even if the light would not be theoretically catching too much of those foliage areas, I'm going to make it so with my painting. And this is an orange that I've mixed with the white and I'm just popping that into the roof areas. And this is one of the things that's, I leave white areas of watercolour paper showing through, particularly so I can do this sort of thing later on. It helps. But when you're using an opaque medium like gouache or an acrylic, you can pretty well paint over anything. And now I'm doing my very exciting splatter with the orange. I thought that would be a nice touch in the foreground as well. Just a little bit of fun. Okay, now this is a white gel pen. And I'm going to just, the, the whole painting is dry now and I'm going to just start doing a little bit of white line work. But I make sure it's a broken line. Don't just outline everything. This white works particularly well against the dark areas. See, just break the line, just a tiny little bit here and there. It's rather fun, and it's just the opposite of using a black pen, of course, which most people use in their journals, and I'll still use black, but I kind of like the white against uh, any shadowed areas. Just I'm making this up here, just a little bit of brick texture marks. And this is my fine tip marker, the black one. So the same thing, I'm just outlining a little bit. Broken lines always. Give your line personality by breaking it. Don't just outline absolutely everything. If you put line around everything, it flattens it. That's something you should remember. And this is the end result. My painting is finished. I could do some text on the side and I might still do that. But thank you for sticking with me and goodbye for now.